musician has a story. I just want to tell you mine. Um, we just want to tell you ours. Dave Martin in the building. Tony Blaze telling me. Don't go. Yes, sir. Don't leave. Please stay with me. Cause you are the only thing I need. Get back. Get back. Yep, to get back. Listen. Now, firstly we stepped in without fuel injection Felt so abandoned, we didn't know how We didn't wanna sell out, we didn't wanna break So we walked like we were kings with no crowns Then you know, we decided to reach, you know Decided to preach, but many more still went on with a frown So much so that we stepped to the whole damn scene And look, it wouldn't give us no sound So we spit, so we switch So we giggle when they come online Cause the funniest thing is that they didn't even know The movement had the soldiers standing all up on the front Line. Why do they act when in fact we didn't put ourselves on the spot? They're just trying to possess this music, yet we already have this whole game on live. Don't go, yes, sir. Don't leave. Please stay with me. Cause you are the only thing I need to get by. Get by. Get by. Just get back. 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 Lead singer in the Dave Martin movement. Um, and that's about it, really. Mm -hmm. I am Charles. I am uh, the lead guitarist for the band Dave Martin. Yes, that's me. I am Tony, and I am the lead vocalist for the Dave Martin movement. Yeah. I am David, I play guitar. So, where did you guys all begin? Okay, well, you what, musically or just... Yeah, where did it all begin? Where did it start? Yeah. Who brought everything together? Mm -hmm. Who That's came in last? Who is the last band member of okay. this band? The well, last band man standing. Uh, basically, well, David and I were having a conversation about two, three years ago. A random conversation about uh, what it would be like to be in a band. And um, so, having vibed a little bit with some songs that I had written, David had heard them, started exchanging uh, insight and stuff like that, and then it just kind of kicked off from there. So we just started taking the acoustic circuit, and then from there we kind of realized that maybe we have something much bigger on our hands, and uh, taking it to the full band scale would be necessary. So we kind of just opened up our hands and uh, increased the size of the team. Uh, along the way we met few interesting gentlemen who you'll hear from today. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's, that's pretty much our story. I mean, David, is there anything I'm missing out here? Pretty much about everything. The yeah. name's quite simple. Yeah. I'm David. <laughs> Dave. Yeah. He's Martin. Martin. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Dave Martin movement, yes. It's called yeah. the Rolling System. And for people who don't know what your music is, what would you define it as? Um, I mean, there's a couple of ways you can define it. You've got, obviously, the heavy hip-hop influence from Martin. Myself, I was brought up on Afrobeat, um, 80s pop, um, R&B, old-school hip-hop. So it's kind of like a, an amalgamation, a fusion of all of those things. Um, Lyric-wise, um, it's a heavy gospel influence, um, but it's a message that we make as palatable as possible. I'm sure Martin can. Yeah, so I, I think we're just about necessary like just expressing ourselves and and letting people know what our lives are about and what we're like you know not just um, you know um, in the studio but just generally in our life and we try to share those stories through our music so sometimes it might be like you know you might wake up feeling like you want to pray sometimes you might feel like crap but you know it's just about balancing that equation and then putting that in the message that we, people can enjoy that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Sounds very good. Um, and what would you say your your unique sound would be? 
for like all the people who don't really know and haven't seen Dave Martin online or gone yeah. on your Facebook or been on your Twitter, yeah. Yeah. what is your sound like? So like people can get like a I think an idea. I, I think we would call it an experimental fusion of an of an interesting kind because we we travel across genres so. Uh, just depending on the feel that we have at the time. So sometimes we might just wake up really feeling like we need a hard hip-hop sound and then there's other times when we need a very soulful acoustic uh, vibe. So, uh, you know, it depends. And sometimes we might have some really powerful vocals on the track. So it just depends on what we're feeling at the time. So there is no genre that we can fit into, but we just try to accommodate as much as we can about, you know, everywhere. But yeah, my next question is what really inspires you guys to like create this music, to make this fabulous music that you currently you know, do? I think I think like you know, this is what we were saying earlier, every you know, every artist has some kind of struggle that they have to face. And I think relating that struggle to music is is the the, 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 the fun part of the situation. When when you're going through the thing you don't like it. But when you're telling the story, you know, there's a million things that you can do with the story. You don't have to lie, but, you know, you can creatively tell the story. And I think that's what we're trying to do. So what inspires us is just the struggles that we go through and the victories that we experience. Or just, you know, emerging from a situation and feeling like, wow, like, you know, I could have died, I could have gone through this, I went through pain, you know, love songs, situations, anything that we can use to just, you know, pick up a vibe. Sometimes just sharing stories that missed ourselves and understanding each other's struggles helps us to just write. So I know that, I know Tony has a, a unique way of writing um, and you know, he can tell you a little bit about that. Oh, um, yeah, my writing technique is quite mad. Uh, a lot of the times I, primarily I think the, the substance of everything I write is 80% of the times, 90% of the times, like most writers anyway, it's something that you've been through in life, it's something you can kind of relate to. Um, but I could just be anywhere, I could just be anywhere and I could hear anything and that just leads to a song. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really weird thing but I, I suppose I'm blessed like that. So, yeah. you know, and then David on the other end, he, he just literally turns your struggle into a rainbow. That's what I call it, really. Um, and he explains this process of going through that. Yeah, no, um, I think my thing is, it's kind of like, often people are scared of their creativity. And I'm the kind of person who's like, no, you need to embrace that. Um, like, any kind of art form, whether it's music or just writing, any kind of art form is like, um, it's like an expression of your emotion, an expression of your feelings. And so it's, for me, it's necessary for you to kind of own those feelings, to be as confident with those feelings as possible. So when you're, you're performing your music, it's as much a reflection of who you really are as possible. Um, so my thing is just to encourage, like, whether it's Tony singing or Martin rapping or Charles in the lead guitar, whatever it is, whoever's doing whatever they're doing, my thing is just to encourage, just like, nah, if that's how you feel, then express that in your music. How would you describe your relationship when it comes to like fashion? Because like the music, it always comes with fashion. So how would you, I guess, relate to your viewers if they see you dressed in a certain way? Or would you guys just say you just lay back, you go with the flow, and you know, there's not a big relationship between your music and your sense of style? Or is that something that's growing? He's the most fashion conscious one. Yeah, um, yeah. Interesting um, habit. He's the He's the least, <laughs> and we're kind of like in between. In between, we're, yeah. just, we're just in between. Yeah, but he's the most. He's the least, and we're in between. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah, that's how, that's how the scale goes. I, I love fashion. Um, I walk around. You know, I do feel like just, I like colors, anything bright, anything necessary. You know, um, and 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 just finding you know interesting ways to, to, to match stuff that people don't really always think about um, but also not to necessarily like feel so out of place in society but I just do like to stand out occasionally I like people to ask you know why are you wearing a bow tie like why are you wearing a hat like I, I like the, those kind of questions 
and I guess that's just the slightly shallow part of me. But um, it's it's all with the purpose, all with the reason. I always like to be ready, you know, because you guys might show up at any time <laughs> and be like, oh, you know, we want to do an interview, and if I just I, I can't I, I can't do I can't bear to see myself on YouTube looking anyhow. So <laughs> like the so, guy, yeah, with bow tie. yeah, yeah, that's uh, that, that's not something I, I like, but you know, it's still I love fashion. Okay. I just generally love fashion. And would you say that fashion has affected your music or? Not really, or it's really just about making music, being creative in that genre rather than putting the two together, or like anything. We think about fashion when the music is nearly done. Like I'm, I'm very visual, so a lot of the times as we're writing stuff, or when as we're producing stuff, I'm, I'm very. I start thinking about what will look like performing it and what will look like for say like in the, in the music videos. So I would say I think about fashion to that degree and. Guys always know anytime we're writing a new song, we're producing a new song, the next thing I start saying is, yeah, if I can see it visually, then it's a good idea. If I can see us in a music video type setting, um, with, you know, the looks and everything, if they know, I think there's a particular song that we wrote and I thought about um, dressing as a reverend father. So I, would, I don't know if that, that would, you know, fall under fashion or anything, but there is a, a sense of, you know, dressing the right way to kind of tell your story better. And I suppose you can call it fashion. Um, I, I, I'm, I try, unfortunately, I have this thing about me where I sometimes want to be a rebel about certain things, so I pretend as if I don't care about fashion, but I do, I, I, I do. But. That's the, that's the in betweenness. Yeah, yeah. I do care. To put you guys on the spot, I know this is horrible, but what is your go-to piece? Like, if you woke up right now and you had to own, had to leave here right now, and you brought a bag with a set of changing clothes, yeah. and you had to look a certain way for a certain whatever you're going to do, what would you pick up first? Would it be coat, shoes? You know, some guys are really picky about that, but wow. the first thing this they'll is do is like take their trainers. Jeans. Jeans. Black jeans. Yeah. Especially if it's something musical. Like there's a, a pair of black jeans I have I just wear all the time any time I perform. Yeah. I wash them though, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to wash your jeans. Yeah. I, really? I, I, really? <laughs> not <laughs> really? Cool, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Cool. Cool. Not oh, regularly. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. What about ironing? No, Whoa. you're not supposed to iron them no. either. Really? That's it's not good to iron them. If you're going to iron them, you iron them inside out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably where you've been going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's that in betweenness we talk about right there. Yeah, I don't know about now your life's going to change. Who makes the labels on these things? I, I, yeah, I think, I think my go to piece is get a hat, bow tie, everything else is detail. That's it. I'm cool. I mean, I'm going I'm to need underwear. Okay, can't just walk out anyhow. Again, <laughs> yeah, that. That part. there's something going on here. I did say yeah. go to peace. That yeah. means you would be dressed. Oh, oh okay, okay. Oh. You would ah, be dressed. so we're dressed in. Yes, yeah, so oh, yeah. go to peace. Like that would make you really comfortable. You know that you could take on the world in that yeah, one piece. Yeah, a new cool. jacket I got. <laughs> <laughs> That's not yeah. a go to piece. <laughs> hey, man. It's my go to piece. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a jacket. <laughs> jacket. <laughs> Jacket. Jacket. Dave? Matrix jacket. Yeah, you have to go leather. You have to pick leather. Oh, jeans, leather. I don't mind going out topless. Just jeans. <laughs> no, he actually does it. No, when I first yeah. met him, he was topless all the time. Yeah. And I just didn't understand it. I've never seen you topless oh. in my life. Oh, Opera oh, studio man. sessions. Seriously. Yeah. When you get in, like, knock the door, David Opus, like, hey! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. It's yeah. like, hey! Natural yeah. guy, man. Just notice. <laughs> Um, Martin seems to know a lot about his style. The rest of you guys, you kind of know what your current style is or how it's going to evolve as you get bigger. You know, would you? Because you're all individual and you all have your individual styles. And Martin has kind of really said what he likes. So it's now it's kind of like you three need to really express how you guys are besides musically. Like, you know, as you said, you like jeans. Jacket, jeans, but how would you put, you know, your style? How would that progress? Or in a year from now, how do you think that would be? My thing is, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm a functional guy, um, but even in that, I, I know there are certain things that I like. Um, like, I don't like anything overly flamboyant, but I do want. I, I'm particular, like. 
if I've got a plain white shirt, then I'm cool. Yeah? But I might put a tie and a t-shirt over the plain white shirt. Um, but it just needs to be a particular way. The sleeves need to be rolled up a particular way. It's, it's, it's more to do with being particular. Um, oh, see you. <laughs> somebody's not being ordered. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think, I think my, my thing is... Um, I'm not overly experimental, but just kind of maybe maybe find a few more pieces that that, that bring out the me. Exactly. So you were just like rolling up sleeves. No, in a no. I manner. think I think I think I think on a day to day, what you'll see me in is jeans, shirt, tie, jumper, jacket, and then shoes or trainers. If I can be bothered to do laces, then it's trainers. If I want to just slip my foot in, it's shoes. It's purely dependent on that. And then when it gets cold, just chuck a hoodie in there as well. So, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll diversify in that way. Maybe I'll diversify. Are there any kind of looks that you'd kind of go into? Oh, yeah. Looks. You need to tell me what looks there are, and then I can go into them. <laughs> <laughs> or anything that you've seen, like you know, if you've seen guys. A lot of guys are wearing chinos. It's getting on my nerves now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a chino confession to make. Yeah, like, yeah. Chinos. Yeah, gotta pay or, a um, really skinny jeans. Uh -oh. Oh, um, yeah. no, not it's really not a bad skinny. thing, but yeah. you know, that is kind of the trend that guys are wearing more fitted stuff. It's very fitted, very formalish. Well, I wouldn't say that. The sun guys have gone down there. It's not metrosexual. Uh, None of you've got mascara on. Oh, uh, well, well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is if I do have a style, is a uh, a sort of um, I like I like smart, you know. I like smart, but I like mixing the smart with a little bit of not smart, <laughs> you know. <laughs> ah, yeah. That's not being very helpful. So, I know, I know, I know. So like, okay, all right, items, items. 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 So like, okay, if I have like a really smart jumper, maybe something like this. I don't know. It might not look very really smart right now, but like you know, um, if I if I had the choice. Me, I like ties. Ties like that all the time. I'll bust a tie, I'll bust a shirt, you know. I don't mind looking very, very smart, you know. But then I might mix it up with, say, something like, you know. Oh, oh well, oh well, oh well. Oh well. But like this, you know. You know, so, yeah, you know, so I'll mix it up. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm. I am. I, I see my style evolving into more of a because I'm a very soulful person, and it isn't just limited to music. I'm very much about feelings and how I'm feeling at the time, or how people are feeling. If if I if I spend a day with you, probably the, the thing I would ask you the most is how, how are you? Are you okay? Are you cool? Are you cool? Are you cool? I'll continually keep on asking that. I'm, I'm always concerned about knowing how people are feeling. So in terms of, um, so going back to my, my fashion tent, it would have to be something that's very soulful. I'm, I'm, I'm very much about yeah, stuff into like the, this. The the yeah, the t-shirts, the t-shirts. And just feeling yeah. free, you know. Um, if, if the occasion calls for it, I, I, I can dabble into all styles. I, you know, if the occasion calls for it, I can dress smart. You know, if we're going somewhere where we needed to dress that way, then fine. But if it was up to me, I would be in my t-shirt, stuff like this, not just ordinary t-shirts. Um, a nice jacket. The only flashy item I can stand is a flashy jacket. I don't, I, everything else is just unnecessary. <laughs> a flashy jacket, yeah. And a flashy watch, then. Yeah, we're good to go. But everything else. Yeah, that's that's it. It. It'll be more soulful. Cool, that's good. Um, so what can we expect to hear from you guys? In the next year? Or? Yeah, we're kind of working on a, uh, an EP slash album, uh, going for a very uh, cinematic feel for our struggles. So this, you know, we got, like I said, we've got, there's so many stories we want to share, but uh, everything is quite epic in terms of feeling. So next year we're planning for an EP, album, um, music video or two, you know, and... Uh, Any dates? Ah, uh, 
I see dates How are you wise. viewers? It's gonna How be in school, whatever, whatever, and okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, well, the fifteenth of October. Definitely, I think the fifteenth of October. My 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 preference would be maybe for uh, for us to release our next single in March. Okay. Um, and then you know maybe the summertime an album drops. I say February. So yeah. Yeah. So February, March, definitely would like to drop a single. So okay. you can expect a few singles from us, and then the album drops, okay. and uh, everyone gets to hear the rest of the material. So yeah, that's it. Sounds you know, you, good. You're gonna hear us on iTunes, and we'll definitely send you an email. Yeah. Just remember us. That's it. Okay. Yeah. And the last final question: Where do you individually see yourselves in the year, in the next year, or in the future? Do you guys see see yourselves being together for a very long time? No, expanding your band definitely a beautiful question I think the, this is the beautiful thing about the Dave Martin movement um, and, and that's that um, it's not just about individuals but about a collective effort to, um, to set up a stage so we're not just you know what I'm saying we're not just about oh, oh we're in a band but we're also about being a platform so we would also like to introduce artists you know bring in other people on board so this is something that could go on for quite a few more years yet to come and even at the end of that you know we're looking at definitely record labels and so forth so there's a few things that are being set up in the pipelines that we are we're very definitely interested in so uh, yeah it's nice to see myself working with these guys for, for the time to come yeah yeah definitely definitely, definitely. okay yes mm. oh <laughs> what was the question <laughs> where you see yourself in the future Individually, or individually, um, man, you weren't listening to me. I was, I was, I was listening to <laughs> his question very intensively. Yes. yes, um, I, 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 you know, I'm, 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 I'm not entirely sure, but I, I, I like playing guitar, I like acting, and I like, um, like most, well, yeah, I like drawing and I like creating and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, anything that involves those three, I am completely, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied, you know? So, who knows? Also, God could take me from one place, take me to another in five years' time. So, I also, there's a, another option, which is what God decides for my life. So, that's it, you know? Oh yeah, me. Um, <laughs> I, I know the question, don't worry. Um, <laughs> and in okay, in terms of I, I kind of because I think like that. I noticed that you asked two questions. You said in a year's time, and then in the future. In a year's time, um, because I'm the band is very much the foundation for for my musical career and for everything that I'm doing in the immediate future. I, I definitely still see myself being within the band, um, and that being the, the focal point of my expression. Um, obviously, I've made it very clear to the guys that at some point, you know, I will go on and express myself in different ways. A solo career, guys. A solo career. Yeah, but that's not even important <laughs> right now. Um, it's in the future. Yay, yeah, 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 yeah. in the future. When that will be, I don't think I need to concern myself with that right now. Um, the most important thing is that you lay this brick, this one brick you're trying to lay down, you lay it well. You lay the other one well, and you lay the other one well. If you're trying to lay down one brick and you're thinking about two or three ahead, you're not really going to do that well. So this is very much my focus. Um, I'm a songwriter as well. I'm part of a songwriting team called Thunder Lightning um, with the artist called Ezekiel. But that's that's something on the side. But I'm 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 a singer. I express myself in that way. And yeah, I'm gonna. I definitely want to continue as being part of the movement. And this is something that, like Martin rightly said, it's it's primarily about the message, not so much about. To a degree, not so much about the characters who are there, but it's more so about the message. Is that we keep the message continuing even after we're dead and gone. You know, that's what we're trying to build. It's not legacy. Yeah, this isn't. Uh, yeah, you know, when they stop, they stop. This is uh, when we die, other people take over. Bless you, but yeah. And my that's kids it. is gonna be rappers, and their kids and kid, their kids is gonna be yeah. rappers. And also, in the future, play, yeah, solo artists and always being able to come back home. Because yeah. this is home and people should know where I came from, you know what I mean, as an artist, so, yeah. What is the message? Ooh, spread the price, man. Just make sure you eat, eat. 
Make sure it's in. Make sure it's in. Yeah, um, myself, it's quite simple. I've been um, producing music for 11, 12 years. Um, I've been playing guitar for about five of those years, keys for about three, bass, I don't know how long. Um, my thing is to master music, um, to master sound engineering, to master instrumentation theory, to master all of those things and then just um, become more skilled at, at bringing out creativity in people. Um, so obviously there's the Dave Martin movement which as we've all identified will just keep on rolling. Um, got arts development through Wahim Creative. I do schools, prisons, um, education facilities with Cyrus Consultancy. Um, there's so many little bits, um, but all of them are kind of contributory towards that aim of bringing out creativity in people. And, and I think I'm at a stage in my life where I'm, like when I was young, it was just like, yeah, I just wanna, I just wanna make music, I just wanna make music, but not that I'm old. Um, but now I'm more like, what's the impact that I'm gonna have on the world? Um, what will my generation say about the contribution that I made to them? Um, and I feel that the, the, the entry point is through the art form of music. But the entry point is into a mansion and there are many rooms in that mansion. So the impact for me needs to be so multifaceted that it's like, he's a musician, but he's also uh, an artist, but he's also uh, a politician, he's also a socialist, he's also an engineer, he's also a mathematician, he's also a scientist. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I want it to be so multifaceted and I want, I really want to have a tangible impact. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Alright guys, we are the Dave Martin Movement. That's it. There we go. And now you have to tell everybody your details, where they okay. can follow you, Facebook right. you. If you want to check us out on Twitter, we are at DM. At DM Movement, okay, one word. Uh, and if you want to catch us on Facebook, Dave Martin, uh, you should see all of us in a picture somewhere. Um, and if you want to send us an email, Dave Martin Music at Hotmail.com. Yeah. If I'm right, and that's it.